guys, welcome back to my kitchen. I'm Mindy, if you haven't been here before, welcome. And if you have been here before, welcome back. Um, today we are going to be making meatloaf. Meatloaf is something I have struggled with my whole life trying to make a decent meatloaf and I think I finally figured it out, at least something that we like. My mother-in-law makes delicious meatloaf. I mean, it is just yummy. My mom makes really good meatloaf that is just yummy. You just want to keep going back for more. I try their recipes and it just never quite works out. So what I've kind of done over the years is just combined a little bit of hers, a little bit of hers, a little bit of mine. If I see something on somebody else's meatloaf that I think might work, I kind of incorporate that. Um, my recipe is just sort of a mixture of many. Let's just call it that because I I don't really know what else to call it. it I've already got my half a cup of shredded carrot and now I'm going to chop an onion and some green pepper. We want a cup of onion. We want to add, you know, to one cup of onion and then one cup of green pepper to this as well. So let's start chopping. I'm gonna do, I think I'm just gonna use the whole onion. I mean, I use two pounds of meat. I use one pound of 93% lean ground beef and then I use one pound of 85% because your meatloaf needs to have a little bit of fat in it but I really don't like to use anything below 85% because that goes beyond just putting a little fat in your recipe. That's just like pure fat to me. Now, well, time for the peppers. And I have some peppers already cut up in my um, freezer, and but I like to use fresh when I'm making my meatloaf because you can really taste those flavors. I mean, you don't really taste, they blend well. And when they're fresh, the flavors are a little more prominent, I think. I don't just toss the raw vegetables into the meatloaf. Done. You guys have watched me slice and dice and chop so many times now. I really appreciate that you keep coming back to watch me slice and dice and chop some more. And if you haven't subscribed, where are you? There you are. If you haven't subscribed and you're watching this, I would really appreciate it if you would click that like button and subscribe. All right, and there we have it. We have half a cup of carrot. Should be one cup, one cup, but I think the onion is a little more than one cup. It's hard to tell because you know how the, they're roughly chopped. So they're kind of, there's a lot of space between some of them. Okay, what I've done is I am heating, this is one tablespoon of butter and probably a tablespoon of olive oil. And I let it melt and get hot and then I'm going to put the vegetables in because sauteing these vegetables for a little while, I mean, it just brings a whole new flavor to your meatloaf. These particular vegetables complement the ground beef and it's just really good. While these are sauteing, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of garlic powder on it. I don't measure when I'm sprinkling like this. I just kind of get a feel for it. And then a little bit of, I don't know if you can see this, majorum. Just do some sprinkles of this on there too. You want your vegetables just slightly sauteed, a little soft. Hamburger meat, ground beef. I have, like I said, an 85% and a 93%. It looks like a lot because there's a lot of ingredients and I get that that can be a little overwhelming sometimes, but these are super simple ingredients. It's nothing you have to like really super prepare for. I mean, the biggest step of preparing to make this meatloaf is this right here, doing the chopping and the saute. Right. Here's the first little bowl of my pre-measured spices. I have a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of onion powder. I have a teaspoon of beef bouillon granules, and I also have half a teaspoon of majorum leaf. Okay, and then here I've got half a teaspoon of coarse ground pepper and one teaspoon of salt. Okay, 
and now I have almost half a, half a cup of breadcrumbs. I ran out, this is all I have, but it's, it's really close to half a cup. If I had half a cup, it would be half a cup. And then I also add half a cup of oatmeal. Okay, and then I add half a cup of milk. And now this, this little concoction is one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, one tablespoon of barbecue sauce, one tablespoon of ketchup, one teaspoon of Dijon mustard, and one teaspoon of A1 steak sauce. And you're just gonna put it in here. I know, it sounds weird. But like I said, I've taken bits and pieces from so many different meatloaf recipes, and this is what I came up with. And then I add one egg, which I'm just gonna sort of stir it around a little bit and put one egg in here. Okay, now this is where it gets a little gross because you gotta get in there with your hands, which I have scrubbed my hands. I've washed them, they're very clean and sanitized. So we gotta just get in here and do it. It's easy to do it with your hands because you don't want to overwork it. You want your meatloaf to have that ground beef texture to it. So I just turn it and sort of squish it down a little bit. Turn it and squish it. Alrighty, hands are clean. You can see they're still a little wet. This is what the meat mixture is going to look like at this point. Now we're going to add the vegetable mixture to it. And it's still a little hot, so you're gonna wanna be really careful not to like burn your hand. Let's just kind of fold those vegetables in. Okay, I have a small baking sheet that I've lined with foil and I have sprayed it with a little bit, just a light coating of cooking spray, just, just in case. And you want to cook your meatloaf on a pan like this so that it has room for some of those, the fats to cook out. If you put it in a loaf pan, like you're baking bread, all of that fat that should cook out and move to the outer edges will just stay in your meatloaf and it'll be very, very fatty. So always go for a baking sheet and just form a loaf on it. It'll, it, it will hold its shape, I promise. So I'm gonna take it out of the bowl and put it on the pan. Now keep in mind, this is a two pound meatloaf because we like leftovers. Chris really loves meatloaf sandwiches, which now he does a wrap. We do low carb wraps and he, it's just, he loves it. I do too. You just want to make a, a loaf shape and make it as even as you can so that it cooks evenly. Okay, and here we have it. This is what it's gonna look like before you put it in the oven. That is, a two pound meatloaf. We're going to put this in the oven at 350 for one hour, and then I will test it with the meat thermometer. So, okay, so I'm creating a workspace for the slice of life expert potato peeler to come take care of some potatoes that need peeling. Hi everyone. I'm Slice of Life's extra potato peeler. Potato number one. And uh, I just need to warm up here and then I'll go really, really, really fast in just a second here. Oh. Peel potatoes that fast, I almost catch everything on fire around me, but uh, that was something. Anyway, looks like all these potatoes are done. Okay, guys, the potatoes are mashed, the green beans are ready, <laughs> and our meatloaf is out of the oven, and it is going to cool for 10 minutes. Well, not cool really, but you need to let it sit for 10 minutes before you slice into it. So we are now probably five minutes to go before we slice into it. Okay, and here we have our finished product. 
We've got the meatloaf with mashed potatoes, gravy, and green beans. And I cheated. The gravy came from a jar, but it's still gonna be good, I think. This looks phenomenal. I love your meatloaf. <laughs> Meatloaf is hit and miss. You just, you never know quite what you're gonna get. <laughs> this is really good. Is it like good? It. Yeah. Okay, I great. love it, I love it. You did really good. Do you need a taste test of carrot? There you go. All right. Oh. Thanks for watching, guys. We will see you next time.